Yes, so we're turning our heads now to elite club level football on the Sportsmax Zone. It was another big day in UEFA Champions League action as four famed clubs in European folklore uh, once again uh, graced the stage. Six-time UCL winners, Bayern Munich welcomed Arsenal to the Allianz Arena with a tie locked at two all. Let's see what happened there. Goretzka, Kane. Target from Harry Kane. Kai Havertz. Martinelli. Certainly worth taking the shot on. It would have needed a prodigious amount of curl to really trouble Neuer. Odegaard. from Odegaard, Tomiyasu back into the Norwegian and that was awkward for Neuer, took a really big deflection. Oh, nicely away from Jorginho, Musiala, has he got the pass? He has, he's found Rafael Guerrero, who hasn't, and off oh, Gabriel. Leroy Sané, pushed away by David Raya, danger is still there, this is Guerrero, and the free header! Well, they came out for the second half with a lot more intent and purpose, much more positive. They've hit the bar, they've hit the post. They've been asking most of the questions, and now they found an answer coming from deep. Kimmich flying forward, his head of the difference. Sané brilliantly done, super blocked by Gabriel. Kimmich, Saliba behind for a corner. Yeah. Change, you'll remember. Physio's been on once or twice, and here's Erdegaard bursting into the area, Erdegaard! Oh my word. That's a really poor corner, and Arsenal are out. Yeah, so the Gunners exiting the UEFA Champions League, uh, getting to the quarter-final stage this year for the first time in 14 years, but this is where it ends for them. Uh, Mariah, Ricardo and uh, Lige, uh, a tough loss here for Arsenal who have stuttered a bit domestically as well, so it's not a good time for the Gunners fans. Yeah. Lance, Mariah, before you talk the football, I, I think this is important. Yes. Um, Lige, I, I know that beneath that smile is hurt. Do you need a hug? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. Like, we can talk about the football. You're sure? You're, sure? You're used very, to this. Very, yeah. We'll get on to your last in a second, Mariah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's get past that though, Elish, because it was it was tough emotionally for the Arsenal fans. But you were going into this tie level, and we know the German efficiency and the Bayern Munich know-how when it comes to Champions League football. So you must have known that this wasn't going to be an easy assignment. What's your assessment of what unfolded today? Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm a big person on tactics and what a coach can impact on a team but i think this last as i mentioned at champions league show both last week and this week i think has a lot to do with things probably deeper than tactics you know the psychological effects of you know arsenal and their history as opposed to Bayern and their history i think in terms of arsenal they're a team that you know hasn't done it they have yet to win a champions league and on top of that they haven't been as i said 14 years before being in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So it has been quite some time, but even when you look at the recent history, like last season, um, where Arsenal were perceived to be, you know, throwing the English League away, for example, when they come into these big games this season, I think it's been most important for them to not lose. And I think that can be a very risky mindset to go into big games with, because when, when things go against you and the planning it doesn't work, it's very difficult to then implement a plan B. And, I think from the first leg where Bayern played, or they played pretty well, they had a very good game plan, did really well on the transition and they stifled Arsenal at, time, at, at times and it was a really close game. This game was no different, I think in the first half Arsenal did really well, extremely well, they were pragmatic but you know that final piece of quality in the final third was absent. I think that you know Arsenal didn't create too much, Bayern didn't either. But this game was always going to be decided by a moment and you mentioned the know-how of Bayern, you know, just sticking around it and in the end it's a survival of their trouble winning team of a few years ago. Yashua Kimmich was probably the best player on the pitch as well, 
who ended up getting the job done for them and I think it was a deserved win for Bayern in the end. Yeah, Bob, a World Cup player, Kimmich, and uh, a man with a lot of experience. Um, assess the goal for me, the decisive moment in the match. Yes, yeah, um, Arsenal tend to employ man marking all over the pitch. It's a mix of man and zonal marking. Um, usually when they're defending in a deep block, they, they rely on their in this case it would be their left winger Martinelli to track his right back who doesn't usually enter these zones seems as if Martinelli fell asleep a bit allowed Kimmich to come in and get a free header but I do think that the zonal aspect of defending which would be one of the two defensive midfielders in Rice and Jorginho probably should have occupied that space a bit better so I, I, I do think that it was a slack goal to concede but in football almost every goal is because of a mistake so it would be a bit harsh to put blame on either Rice or Martinelli or Georgina, I just think it was some good clever movement by Kimmich and an excellent header as well. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that because he covered a lot of ground and he moved quickly from a long way to go to the header. So even if you were tracking him, it would have been difficult to track the, tra track the movement. Yeah, it was really good work. I, he's a very experienced player, a quality player as well. Started this season a bit shaky. He was playing defensive midfield for the past couple of seasons. And I think Thomas Tuchel did a really good job of identifying his deficiencies there and moving him back to his you know, rightful position at right back. And I think his season has really taken off since then. And he has been pretty fantastic. As I mentioned, he was probably the best player on the pitch today. Created a multitude of chances, were extre extremely dangerous from that right and half space. And that's, it was a right and half space where he made that run from eventually to get into that space in the middle of the box. And it was good work from him, good work from Bayern and a really good goal. Yeah, in your assessment, Lejay, is this Arsenal team or is there any evidence that this Arsenal team might be tired? Oh, most definitely. It was actually my pre-match notes coming into the game. We could see that um, from the Aston Villa game over the weekend, the second half, I think, although Unai Emery is a manager that is known to make second half adjustments and his team usually responds well in second halves, we saw that Arsenal were much, they, they didn't have the legs for it in the second half. What's the reason for that, you think? Mismanagement of the squad, I think it has to come to, obviously I'm a very big fan of Mikel Arteta, but I think for two seasons now he's been probably, a, he has mismanaged the squad, especially down the stretch, and it has led to tired players, players playing injured. Um, we've seen it in case, especially in midfield, for example, someone like Rice who was bought and was playing very well in the defensive midfield area as a number six has been shifted across to left centre mid now to facilitate Jorginho and if you're playing in a midfield with Jorginho you have to do a hell of a lot more running than you would usually be doing if you're covering the pivot by yourself or playing with a LCM that would be doing much more defensive work so I think it's taking a toll on his legs so that's an issue as well we've also seen it with Martin Odegaard who has been extremely dependable dependable physically he's started to weigh in a bit and I do think that when Arsenal has they do have options off the bench. They do have Thomas Partey, who is coming back from injury, yes, but I do think that he hasn't been getting enough game time. Emile smith -Rowe especially as a rotation option for Martin Odegaard, Fabio Vieira. It's not that Arsenal is a team that's bereft of quality off of the bench. Yeah. They have one of the best benches in world football. I just don't think that they've been using the squad, or Mikel hasn't been using the squad effectively enough, and that has cast them, or is casting them, as the season wins on. Mm. Yeah, really, really damaging week for Arsenal. Yeah, well, the last two winners of the competition, Manchester City and Real Madrid, dueled at the Etihad Stadium. The teams were locked at 3 all entering the second leg, and we have those highlights now. Bellingham collects, forced backwards briefly. Valverde, here's Vinicius Junior. And he squeezed it across, and Edison has kept out the first, but not the second. It, good save initially from Edison, but he just can't keep out the, the second effort. Really good play from Rodrigo, but it's good play from Real Madrid, and that's what they're capable of. I think he actually missed kicks the first one. It sort of hits his knee, doesn't it? But he's the first one to then react when Edison makes that save. He can't do much about that, Edison. Rodri. Referee quite content with the quick free kick. Here's De Bruyne now. De Bruyne has a go, and Lunin's equal to it. Well, there's Haaland finding Grealish with a little bit of space. Grealish's shot deflected, in fact, better than that. It is blocked by Rudiger. Trying to burst past Valverde, came off Rudiger, and De Bruyne scores! 
Well, it was coming, wasn't it? All Manchester City in this second half, and Doku, just a different problem for Real Madrid. He's direct, he goes on the outside. They can't quite clear the ball. It falls to Kevin De Bruyne, Rudiger, and there's absolutely no way that Kevin De Bruyne is going to miss from there. It's a brilliant finish right into the roof of the net. Akanji. Here's De Bruyne once more. And De Bruyne! He's carrying out his mission, isn't he? Finds a Kanji, and there's De Bruyne! Oh! It's Kevin De Bruyne. And it's Haaland at the end! Diaz, Rudiger! Oh. Carlo Ancelotti gets ready to calm his players down and get them ready to take the penalties that will decide who gets into the Champions League semi-finals this time. And Modric's effort saved by Edison with barely a flicker of response. Pressure on the Portuguese, ah, and he's made a real mess of that. Up comes Kovacic. And it's saved by Ludin. What a stop. And now he's got his eyes on the prize. Rudiger to send Real Madrid through to the semis. He's done it. Real Madrid have shown their metal once more. Manchester City's treble hopes are over this time. It's Real Madrid who march on to a fourth semi-final in a row. Too much to take for some of City's players. Well, there's no question that Real Madrid is the most highly respected team in Europe. But in recent seasons, many people think that Manchester City is the best team in Europe. And they were beaten today by Real Madrid. Really, really tough uh, battle there today. Uh, went all the way down to extra time and penalties. Legend. I can't say we're surprised that it went this far. Even though many people had City as favourites, Real Madrid's pedigree um, always kept them in the story. Yeah, and their, their ability to adjust to whichever opponent that they're facing as well. I do think that Madrid obviously are a team of immense quality. So too Manchester City. But I think Madrid did so well to stop what Manchester City do well, which is try and overload certain areas of the pitch. And eventually, yes, Manchester City got their opportunities. And yes, they probably should have taken quite a few of them. But I do think that Real Madrid, especially in the first half, did most of their damage there. They were a constant threat on the transition. We saw their goal here. I think the dovetailing between all three of their attackers, which would be Jude Bellingham, Rodrigo, and Vinicius Jr., I think was excellent. The work rate of Federico Valverde for the entire game was excellent as well. I do think that Madrid, although City may have created more chances on the day, I do think that Madrid were, could say that they're deserved winners in the end. Yeah, City 33 shots on target, Real Madrid 18, sh 8 shots on target. And, you know, I'm still stunned that they let it go to penalties, uh, Leger, because of the fact that one of the headlines, um, you know, circling around is that Manchester City will have to go back and think about the numerous opportunities, the numerous mischances that, of course, happened today, the point that it went to penalties. Yeah, that's, that's just a, a part of football. I, I think, the, the, as I always say, the most important thing is getting your team, getting yourself into places to finish off these chances. And even though Man City took that many shots, I think a good thing that Real Madrid did was to limit them from low XG places. So I think if a team, Madrid, they got around three XG, I believe, expected goals, of course, is the probability of a goal going in. Once a shot is taken, they took 33 shots for three XG. The, the numbers don't match up. I think that's, val that's a valuation of 0.1 per shot which is essentially a shot from the top of the box blocked by a lot of players if we were to put it through that hypothesis test. So I, I think Real Madrid did a good job of limiting the quality of chances of Manchester City. And I think really only the big, big chance that I would say Manchester City missed was the Kevin De Bruyne cutback shortly after he scored as well. So I do think that Real Madrid did an excellent job defensively. They were a threat in the first half and the transition as well. And yeah, it was just an excellent tie between two teams of contrasting styles. 
And I guess that's just what the Champions League is about. Uh, as Sir Lan said, that's Real Madrid's pedigree. And Manchester City losing a game like this, Pep Guardiola losing a game like this, is a Spanish coach and a Pep Guardiola pedigree. So that's just how football crumbles sometimes. Yeah, and I think we need to spare some time to talk about Real Madrid's goalkeeper Lunin coming in for the injured uh, Thibaut Courtois and really, really holding his own. I mean, the penalties speak for themselves, right? Yeah, um, the, the thing is with Real Madrid, it, it's hard to, to give them a pat on the back when it comes down to having all of these great players because they tend to just hoard them. Lunin has been a player that has been on loan from Real Madrid for quite some time. You know, Thibaut Courtois got injured, you know, that Kepa, they brought in Kepa. It wasn't until Kepa's poor performances started to show up time after time again. And yeah, that, that's what really forced their hand to play Lunin. They have a, a wealth of talent, Real Madrid, all across the world. And Lunin is one of those players as well. There's a Kevin De Bruyne chance that was missed as well. So yeah, Lunin, he, he, he's a very good keeper, a very good young keeper. But, you know, that's Real Madrid for you. They have good players coming out of their ears. So. That's just what they're going to do to teams. Overwhelming. Okay, Lej, great having you discussing Champions League football here on the Sports Max Zone. The two English teams, Arsenal and City out, and uh, Bayern Munich and uh, Real Madrid advancing to the semis. We go to break back with more on the Sports Max Zone after this. Oh.